In this video, we will discuss surface effect. So surface by definition is a defect. Uh, surface is where the periodicity of your crystal structure stops, uh, is broken. Um, and the chemical nature of the surface is that there are some atoms sitting on the surface that don't have the number of the, that don't have the sufficient number of neighboring atom that it can bond to so the uh, the surface contains a lot of incomplete chemical bonds sometimes called the dangling bonds um, so these dangling bonds and incomplete uh, incomplete bonds um, produce energy levels that are located within the band gap, just as the bulk defects and impurities produce energy levels that are uh, located within the, within the band gap. Um, the, uh, the, the nature of, the, um, of these defect states, surface states, um, are not well known in general, and there are many varieties of defect states that are possible depending on the exact uh, the termination of the surface. Uh, but in general, the, the density of surface states um, is known to uh, be proportional to roughly the, the two-thirds power of the atomic density. Um, and this number for silicon is about 10 to the 15th per square centimeter, which is a, a, a substan pretty substantial number. And the energy level is spread out over a range because there are many different types of defect states which will have uh, a, a different energy. So the, these surface state energy levels are spread around over a range and it is generally known to peak around one third of the band gap from the, from the valence band um, in, in, the, in silicon and other semiconductors that has a diamond crystal structure. Um, and this is not specific to just real surface, but also you have a similar situation for any hetero interface, meaning that the interface between two different materials. So Schottky contact, metal semiconductor contact, is an example of hetero interface. It's an interface between two different materials, semiconductor and metal. And at the interface, you should expect a lot of these surface states or, or interface states producing these uh, energy levels within the uh, band gap uh, located, physically located at the interface. So uh, let's consider these uh, Fermi level uh, pinning effect in the Schottky context. So the Schottky, when you form a Schottky contact, then if you recall, how, how does a metal semiconductor Schottky contact reach equilibrium? By Migrate by, by migrating uh, electrons from semiconductor, n-type semiconductor, to metal. And these migrating electrons leave ionized donors behind, and these ionized donors produce electric field, and these electric field produces a potential barrier that opposes the migration of electrons. So when these two balance each other out, then you reach equilibrium. Now, this is an ideal Schottky contact case, now consider the case where you have a substantial density of surface states as shown here. So these, um, these states uh, before formation of the Schottky contact when they are isolated, uh, the, uh, the distribution of, of these surface states peaks at about one third of the way into the band gap uh, from the valence band as I said before. So most of the states are located below the Fermi level. And if you recall, the Fermi direct probability function, energy levels located below Fermi level has a very high probability of, of having an electron there. So most of these, you can imagine that the most of these surface states actually have electrons in there. And as the, when, when you form a Schottky contact and, and when the band bending occurs, then some of these um, states that originally had electrons get pushed up above the Fermi level. And when they, when they are pushed up above the Fermi level, then 
the probability according to the Fermi direct probability function once again the probability of finding electron in these states are small which means that these guys will release electrons away from it so it, the electrons will be emitted into conduction band and those electrons will then fall into the metal side because metal side has lower energy. So, um, the, not only that the conduction band electrons of the anti-semiconductor migrate over to metal, you also have an additional source of electrons, surface states, emitting electrons and pr uh, providing these, these carriers uh, to the metal side um, in, in, in order to reach equilibrium. Now suppose the case where you have a very very high density of surface states and a high density of surface states so that the electrons produced by this surface states uh, here is comparable to the electrons migrating from the con conduction band of the n-type or consider even even more if extreme case where the number of electrons emitted from the surface states is greater than the number of electrons migrating over to the conduction band. In that case, the number of electrons uh, produced, uh, by, emitted by the surface states will be enough to reach equilibrium. And so, irrespective of your doping density, you will always reach the same equilibrium state where the Fermi level position, you know, Fermi level at equilibrium uh, should be constant throughout the system. So the Fermi level position here at equilibrium is determined mainly by the surface states, not your uh, electron concentration, majority carrier concentration in the semiconductor, which is controlled by your doping. So in this situation, uh, your Fermi level is fixed your Fermi level position is fixed to the energy where the surface density, surface state density peaks. Again, that is typically one third of the way into the band gap from the valence band in many semiconductors. And it doesn't matter how lightly or how heavily dope your semiconductor, your Fermi level will always get stuck at that energy level. And that phenomenon is called a Fermi level pinning. And it takes away a very very important degree of, of freedom for engineering for semiconductor devices so it, it is detrimental it, it is a major source of degradation in semiconductor device and so it has been a major topic in the development of semiconductor device um, to clean up the surface to reduce the surface state density as much as possible so that you don't um, suffer the Fermi level pinning and, and the consequent degradation of the semiconductor device performance.